Well, if you're a football fan in the state, you remember this scene the first Saturday in February. Spencer Region was set to commit to Alabama. Then uh, something happened, and he put on an Auburn cap and really shocked the state committing to the Tigers. He said at the time that Auburn had a family atmosphere. He felt more comfortable there than Alabama. But, uh, oh, how things can change. Just this past week, Region reopened his recruitment. And now, Roddy, the question becomes, because I think it's obvious Bama's back in the mix. Yep. Ultimately, does he wind up at Alabama? Well, we'll have to see about that, Gary. You know, we've talked all along. Initially, we said that it was obviously a big surprise that uh, Spencer chose to go to Auburn at that time. But, again, I thought the, the decision really was kind of premature. I knew that Spencer really favored Alabama quite a bit all along. And so we'll see what happens down the stretch. We mentioned here a few weeks ago he was at a spring practice here at Alabama. I know that he's been spotted at Coleman High School wearing an Alabama shirt. So those types of things maybe not necessarily meaning that he's going to end up at Alabama, but uh, I think Alabama, there's a, good, there's a good chance that could happen. And uh, let's keep in mind, too, other schools are recruiting him. And the way this one's gone, he might wind up uh, well, somewhere besides Alabama well, or Auburn. Uh, you know, I think it wouldn't surprise me if Spencer took some visits, obviously, to uh, s several schools. There's been mention he may go up to Penn State, Tennessee, Auburn uh, again. Uh, Ole Miss has been in the mix, Florida State, and there's even been mention of L uh, USC. Well, he is a, uh, a big young man, certainly looks the part, and of course uh, a lot of uh, his recruiting during the fall is going to depend on how well he plays uh, for Coleman this year. Now he is set to graduate high school early and enroll in January, which makes him even more attractive to college coaches. Okay, let's uh, go to the phones. First up tonight, my good buddy CB. And I understand, CB, you want to talk about Spencer Region. Yes, sir. Is he uh, uh, that great a player, or what's up with that kid? I mean, you know, uh, do we really uh, – is he going to be all right? Is his attitude and stuff, you know, what do you all think? Well, CB, he is a good player, and uh, Alabama obviously is interested, as Rodney said. They had him on campus at a practice during the spring, and there's a reason that he's opened up his commitment, and that's because Alabama continues to show interest. I know Alabama continues to evaluate him, as they do a lot of prospects, Rodney, but uh, he is a good player. He has said some things that have rubbed people the wrong way, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he got his feelings hurt, and he seems to be a sensitive young man, but... Uh, Seems to be a, a good kid and a fine football player. Well, we've said all along he was, a, he was a really good kid. There's no question about that, CB. I think he does have a good attitude. I think he's just a young kid who's made some maybe mistakes, didn't understand the recruiting process maybe extremely well, and maybe some things he should or should not say. But that's okay. It doesn't make him a bad kid at all. And, you know, when you look at him, CB, physically, you just don't find many guys his size, 6'6", six, six, probably 335, 40 pounds, and he's not a big fat kid. He is a, He's pretty well put together, and, you know, he – Again, I don't know what you would do with him in college in terms of I think he'd probably be a guard. I know he's played some – I think he's played some tackle there at Coleman, but certainly I think he'll be an inside guy on, on the next level. And he's a big body. I mean, you can put him out there maybe at right guard and he could become, you know, what they call a mauler. I think that certainly his size lends to that. Yeah, he looks SEC ready physically. You don't always see that from offensive linemen that are still in high school. Okay, let's talk to Bart in Tuscaloosa. Bart, welcome in. Thanks for holding. Hi, how you doing? Doing well. I think we're going to be in football this year. Well, I, I think Alabama's going to have a, a really good team again, Bart, and I know Rodney agrees with that. We have not uh, even started breaking down the schedule yet. Last year, you and I both picked Alabama to go undefeated and win the national championship, mm -hmm. and they did it. Yep. Uh, but it's going to be tough to repeat that, and, and, and that's what I tell fans all the time that come up and ask me, can they go 14-0 again? Well, yeah, they can go 14-0, but it's hard to do it once, much less twice. So good football team, yes. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be, I think, more difficult to repeat than it was to win it the first time. Yeah, it usually is. And you have everyone gunning at you. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of focus. But I think if anybody can handle it, certainly Nick Saban can. He's been there before. He's been in this position. I think he's got the players' attention. I think this team, a lot of people say, well, how could you go 14-0, have the kind of season Alabama had, and, and still be hungry? I think this team is still hungry. I think there's still a lot of guys on this team that have a lot to prove. You have a lot of new guys on defense, some guys stepping up that you expected some things from last year, guys like Damian Square, who was injured, Dante Hightower, Jarrell Harris, uh, Courtney Upshaw is just starting to blossom into his own. Josh Chapman, we could go on and on. Luther Davis is a guy that's getting his first opportunity to play significantly, I think. And, you know, you look in the secondary, there's a lot of talent back there. You're talking about Drake Kirkpatrick. B.J. Scott's a tremendous athlete. Mark Barron returns. You know, you got to find another safety. Don't know who that'll be. But uh, there's a lot of guys that I think has, have, have a, uh, reasons to be hungry and reasons to be motivated. And I think on the offensive side is the same way. So 
I think Alabama has a chance to be an outstanding team. People talk about the youth in the secondary, Gary, but, you know, Alabama, I think, will face like eight or nine teams that are breaking in new quarterbacks this year. Oh, that's a great point you make about being hungry. A lot of those guys won a national championship. They've got a ring on their finger, but they weren't playing the roles that they'll be playing this year, so they've got something to prove. Okay, we're going to take a timeout. Phone lines are open at 205-348-WBUA, so give us a call. We'll be back with more calls and emails right after this. We are going to uh, hear from Gary. He's no longer on the line in Fayette, but he left us uh, a question, Rodney. Who is the leading school for recruit Antonio Richardson? And that's a good question. The big offensive lineman out of Nashville, Tennessee. Last year at this time, it looked like Alabama had to jump on everybody, but it seems that that has, has changed to some degree. Well, you know, you look at Antonio Richardson. In fact, we spoke to him last night, and I, I think this guy is a must-have for Tennessee. He's from Nashville. He's a huge lineman, two-way guy, 6'6", 300 pounds, and he's, you know, some people have compared him to Reggie White on the defensive side. I'm talking about people in Tennessee. And, you know, but a lot of people think on the other side that he'll end up a, an offensive tackle. So, you know, again, a tremendous player regardless of how you, you cut it. But I think right now, I think Tennessee's a team to beat for him. I think there's a lot of in-state pressure and a lot of in-state things going on that work in Tennessee's favor. And, uh, you know, I think uh, you have to give them the edge. Right, I think it's safe to say he's kind of like uh, – uh, James Stone. Well, he's, he's a lot like Andre Smith was for Alabama. Yeah, that's Mike true. Mike Shula was here. That's true. No for, question. For I no think question. you're right. They, they've got to get that guy, and I agree with you. I think they will when it's all said and done. All right, uh, one of our uh, good friends, Trey, from West Blockton is on the line. Trey, welcome in. How are you? How are you? No, doing I'm well, Trey. I'm Go good. ahead. I'm doing well. Um, I'm wondering about Mark Ingram more so than Julio, Marcel, or some of the other guys because of the nature of his position. You know, it's very, and, you know, as it relates to, you know, the next level because it's very physical. You know, uh, most of the elite rushers leave early because of all the factors relative to the nature of the position, and he's already a, probably a mid-first-round guy if it were, be, were to be held today. I'm just wondering, has there been any actual word, not speculation, but actual word from like a credible source that he's actually maybe leaning toward coming back? Hey, Trey, uh, no, nothing from, from the Ingram camp or anybody at Alabama, no word at all, but I think your hunch is correct. Uh, he's already got a Heisman in hand and a national championship ring. You do take a pounding at the running back position. My guess is, Rodney, if he has a good year, he'll be going after his junior season. Yeah, you would think so. And, again, it's way too early, Trey, for anyone to start predicting those types of things on any of those guys, Ingram or uh, Marcel Darius, Julio Jones, whoever it might be, Dante Hightower. We'll just have to see what happens. But, again, like Gary said, I, I understand your point in terms of the running back position. All right, we've got to take a timeout. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. We need to get this email in. What are Alabama's chances with uh, – Jadavion Clowney. Some people say he's the best player in the country, defensive lineman out of South Carolina. Yeah, Gary, he's an outstanding player. There's no question about it. If you've seen his tape, uh, he runs like a halfback. He's a big defensive end, outside linebacker type, but a tremendous player. Everybody in the country would love to have Jadavion in their program. And, uh, you know, maybe the number one player in the country, according to some. But I think Alabama does have an excellent shot at him. Again, he's from the state of South Carolina. It's always difficult to go into another state and get a guy like him. But, again, I think Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, probably his top two or three right now, but a lot of other schools in the mix. Alberton Burns is his recruiter, and Coach Burns knows that territory, having been at Clemson, and, and he's as good as they come. So Alabama will be in the mix there. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, there's only one place to go for the replay anytime you want, WVUATV.com. We're going to have it up. We had some problems last week, but we're going to get this one posted for you. And it's dinner time. And Rodney, you know, this has really taken off. People call me now on Tuesdays and say, where are y'all going to dinner tonight? Well, we'll announce tonight we're back at Buddy's Rib and Steak in Northport. Come out and join us. Talk some football or basketball, whatever's on your mind. That's uh, Buddy's Northport. Thanks to our producer, John Huddleston, our assistant producer, Alex Cordery, our technical director, Jonathan Newman. Thanks to all of our camera people and studio people. And, of course, thanks to Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris, and thanks to you for watching. We'll see you next week on the one the only Tider Insider TV. Good night.